Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and the 19th installment of the IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to cover part three and the final part of spectrum scope operation. We're going to finally get to the fixed edge custom programming. I know a few of you have asked about that. And Again, we've got a little bit to cover, so let's jump right in where I so rudely cut myself off last time, and we're going to pick up the rest of the waterfall settings. If it's a little confusing jumping right into this, you can go back to number 18 and watch the last couple of minutes of that so that you can pick up uh, where we're starting from here. So, let's get to it. And then... And then waterfall size on the expand screen so we'll go to large here the default is mid this makes your scope even smaller and we'll show you if we go to small now the scope is smaller and your I mean sorry the waterfall is smaller so your scope is larger and I'm gonna put it back to mid so waterfall peak color level, and this is a little bit confusing the way that it's, to me, the way that it's explained. The peak color now will be on grid one, which means that I'm showing the peaks on very, very low signals. It shows the peak color on the waterfall. If I change the peak to grid 8, which is the maximum, I, I basically get the largest difference. So I don't have any peaks on here that are making this um, red. If I had somebody who was a, you know, like 60 dB over S9 signal, that would show up red now because it would be at the eighth spot. So it's it's basically these grid levels here that it's talking about. So if something reaches that grid, it's red. And um, that's the maximum color. You don't have any choices over what the min and max colors are on the waterfall. You can just set kind of which grid number on there displays the maximum color. So if I go to 4, now you see, like here, something that's at 4 is showing red here. It's kind of getting to the fourth grid level. So um, I've found that I, I leaving it at 8 for me works visually. Again, you'll have to experiment. And then the waterfall marker, auto hide, that's just for the grid. Um, it will hide this marker when you stop. So right now you see the marker moving and, and it stays in the waterfall. If you turn the auto hide on, when you stop tuning, it, it suppresses the marker in the waterfall portion of the display. So it doesn't interfere with the, with the signal. So if I'm right on top of the signal here that I'm, that I'm looking at, I don't have the marker kind of interfering with what I'm seeing on the waterfall. Oh, sorry about that. And then... Next, we're going to cover the fixed edges. Okay, let's take a look at the settings for the fixed ranges. So we're going to go into the set screen, and I've got it on the fixed edges. Excuse me, fixed edges, not ranges. And if this is the, uh, the bottom entry on the scope setting screens, and then if you touch the fixed edges, you will get a list of the fixed edges that are available. This list is fixed, as the name implies, I guess. There is no option for these ranges. So there are a total of 12 ranges. You can see that here in the manual. And we'll go through them on the screen here. So there's the first four on this screen, the next four on this screen. And then the final four, oh, excuse me, I think there's 13 ranges. 
Yeah, there's one more here. So let's go back. The first four, the next four, the last four, and then one single one. And this is more if you are in Europe and you have the 70 megahertz range that's in here. So let's look at how the fixed edges work within each of these ranges. I am currently on 80 meters, which I usually am because I'm recording this in the evening and the band is uh, at least a little bit alive. So if you go to the fixed edges, 80 meters is going to fall in the 2 megahertz to 6 megahertz range. Again, this outside range is not adjustable. These are a set of fixed ranges for where the scope operates. So if you touch that range, now within that range, you have three fixed edges sets. These are the default ones that come from the factory when the radio is in the factory reset uh, condition. So the first one is the entire 80 meter band. The next one is the bottom portion of the 80 meter band, usually CW and some of the digital areas. And then the third one here is a portion of the C, uh, sideband portion on the upper part of the band. You can change any one of these fixed edges to be whatever you like within this 2 to 6 megahertz range. So, for example, I've had some people that have programmed the 60 meter frequencies and have uh, mentioned that they, if you put the scope on any of the fixed edges, it shows out of range. And that's because none of them are programmed. So the 60 meter frequencies are in the 5 megahertz band. And you can touch the edge set that you want to change. And then you just simply put in what you want for a frequency. Touch the upper one. Whoops. Sorry, I needed to hit enter. Let's try that again. So 5330, enter, and then 5335, it's a very small range by default, so we can say 5375, enter, and that's now our fixed range for that. So if I go back into 80 meters here, and if I change the edge, my the def let's, let's go back here. The default one, the first one that I was on is the whole band. The second one was that lower portion from 3.5 to 3.575. And then now I've changed the third edge to be 5.330 to 5.375. And as you can see, it says the scope is out of range because I'm nowhere near that. And you can also see the green arrows flashing to say that my frequency that I'm tuned to is down there somewhere. So if I uh, tune to five, three, four, zero, and what do you know, I actually managed to put it right on a frequency. Uh, this is outside of the the 60 meter band actually it's up here in the 535 to 536 area this is some commercial um, transmissions that are down here so but as you can see the fixed range now I'm in fixed range and it's 5330 to 5375 so let's go back into the fixed edges we'll go back here and uh, I'm going to set this one actually back to 80 meters. So I'm going to just say 3600 for the bottom end, and we'll make it 4 even for the top end. And of course, now I'm scope out of range here. And again, so now the scope edges are set to 3.6 to 4. And it's telling me that my actual frequency is way up here somewhere. So if I go back into the 40 meter band, then you can see that I've got most of the, I'm sorry, the 80 meter band. I've got most of the band here. Actually, I meant to do like 3.8 to 4. 
Uh, and that's that's really it for the fixed edges in terms of uh, what you can do. The presets for all of these on uh, the, the 1.6 to 2 range is set to portions of the 160 meter band. If you go up here to the 6.8, it is set to various portions of the 40 meter band. So the presets on all of these are set to ham bands. This is set to the 30 meter band. Uh, of course, 11 to 15 is set to the 20 meter band, and so on. <clears throat> so you have three slots in each one of those fixed ranges. Uh, the defaults are all the various ham bands, and you can set the the pieces to whatever you want. Now, actually, there's 30 to 45, at least in the United States. This is not any portion of a ham band here. So, um, and they, you'll notice all three of these are just set to the same 30 to 31 megahertz. So you can set these anywhere from 30 to 45 if there was something you were looking for there. 45 to 60, of course, again, set to the 6 meter band. And then this is set to the 70 megahertz band, which I know, I don't know too much about it, but I know this is uh, available over in Europe. Uh, and I think other parts of the world. So there you have it. That's the fixed edges and how you set them. You can... You can make the three sets whatever you want within those ranges. And then when you are on any portion of the band, if you just repeatedly press the edge button, you'll get each of the three ranges. There is one final thing that you should note about the fixed edges. If we go and look at them, you'll notice that each of the ranges is not the same. So the first range here is just a little bit over one and a half megahertz. The one that covers 160 is only uh, 0.4 megahertz or 400 kilohertz. The range that covers 80 is 4 megahertz. The range that covers 40 meters is 2 megahertz and and so on. This one's 3, this one's 4, this one's 5. So they're all different uh, ranges. This one's actually the the one that has no ham band here from 30 to 45 is 15 megahertz um, as is the one from 45 to 60 and then this one's about 14 megahertz. So the ranges are are different and pretty big on some of them but the other thing is and you'll notice these are set from 30 to 31 megahertz here the largest span that you can do in any of them is 1 megahertz. So it will not let you do anything larger than a 1 megahertz span for the fixed edges. So, for example, if I leave this one at 30 and I try to put in 45 and hit enter, it goes back to 31. So if I do 31 point one it still goes back to 31 I can do 30.999 but that is the largest I can do so you are limited to a 1 megahertz maximum span on any of the edges that you do that's the most that the scope will cover and that's about it for the fixed edges and also just about it for the entire scope segment. Okay, well, we finally made it through the spectrum scope section. Sorry that we had to break that up into three separate videos, but there was a lot of material to cover. Next time, we're going to take a look at section six, the voice recorder functions. We'll see how far we get in a single video with that. Hopefully, most are all of the way through it. As always, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. And a thumbs up also helps too, if you uh, would be so kind as to do that. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.